Happy, happy, happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to our After Chat. Our After Chat is our program and our service where we get a chance to connect and have some really interesting conversations with our guests and members who have worshiped with us in person in church today. This afternoon, we have two special guests. And after we speak to our two guests, we'll get a chance to speak to Pastor Carl Cunningham, who brought us the word this afternoon. Our first guest is a good friend of mine, Fitzroy Gillespie. Fitzroy, wow, wow, wow. I'm so, so happy you hey, well, man. said yes to join us this <laughs> afternoon. How are you, sir? I am good. Amazing. Highly favored and blessed. And blessed. Blessed and highly favored. Amen. Amen. How was your week, Fitzroy? Uh, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. Um, yeah, there was work, but you know what? God has brought me another full year of life oh, as I celebrated my birthday right, this week. Right. So, you know, it's been a blessing. Oh, man. It's been a blessing. Belated happy birthday, Fitzroy. It's been a blessing. Oh, you look like 27. <laughs> I'm not sure I wish I was. But... I wish I was. As part of the sermon says, mm -hmm. youth is definitely something that we need to grab a hold of. Yes, yes, And move yes, forward. Yes, yes. I think I'm going to ask you, what is your secret? But I'll... I'll probably ask you that offline. Uh, this afternoon, we had an amazing service from praise and worship to the word. Yes. What was your highlight this afternoon? I must say, you know, walking into that praise and worship, mm. that was a blessing. Amen. 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 That was a blessing. As I think about from yesterday, I was just this whole week just thinking about how God has blessed Amongst of hard, amongst hardships. Right. I'm not gonna say things haven't been tough, but mm -hmm. even through those tough times, uh, we're able to find happiness because we know that He is, and always will be with us, and always carry us through. Amen. Right. Amen. And I think that resonated throughout the whole praise and worship. Mm. Um, it's almost like dale and pastor sat down and decided what they're gonna do but i know right. that did not happen yes i know that was just the holy spirit and Amen. then the pastor just wrapped it up with his sermon oh you know powerful it was a really powerful sermon especially for me at the beginning of the sermon pastor asked a question what would you do if you were to see like 200 million in your bank account <laughs> what what would you do if it's right interesting what i would do I know what I would I would definitely be giving back. Mm. It's something that I do now. Okay. I give back a lot to different communities. Um, like just last week, the week before I was in Jamaica giving back. Amen. So we Amen. opened up um, free eye clinics where mm -hmm. we do screening. And we just cut a ribbon in uh, Montego Bay mm -hmm. last week, Wednesday, to do um, surgeries. Amazing. So we do free cataract surgeries. Wow. Um, That's for, good. For, for, that, for that whole community in Jamaica. So it's something that I've always been a part of. Mm -hmm. And I know what I would definitely be doing with that money is funding wow. a lot of that project of giving back to communities and giving back to people. I'm really happy that you're making that kind of impact on people. And I, I know in your professional work, you also oversee a number of people right yes in our sermon pastor talk about you know managing the people that you know god has blessed us with right? yeah how do we like what how do you manage the people around you like i mean you have different personalities you have problems and challenges how do you make it through every week you know without losing any more of your hair <laughs> any more of my hair <laughs> Well, it's kind of interesting is that I actually was thinking about that when um, I was in there sitting down and just thinking about it. And I remember at one time, because I'm in the corporate world. Right. I'm in the corporate world. As you know, it's difficult in the corporate world yes. to mention certain, to say yes. certain things, to do certain things. Exactly. Right. And I remember at one point, at one point I actually said, I actually told someone I'm, I'm going to quit mm. the corporate quit. world. Wow because I didn't think I was able to make an impact within that world. And the person looked at me and said, why would you do that? And I said, because the corporate world is not where we can, and they're like, no, you need to find a way, Fitzroy. 
you're there for a reason. God Amen. has put you in there for a reason. Amen. Until Amen. he tells you to leave, yes. you're there for that for a reason. Wow. Wow. So I actually had to find a way to make an impact within the corporate world. And to be honest with you, it's actually turned around to be a blessing for me. Um, it's interesting when you allow God to use you mm. in certain spaces. And I've been able, I've never, I've had so much conversation with people within that corporate world yeah. that says, Fitzroy, thank you for this conversation. Mm. I never ever would have thought we would have talked, have this type of conversation about God within this building. Wow, powerful. And uh, I've been able to make that connection with people and then I realize it's all about God and let him, him as the pastor said in the sermon today, just let him deal with what you have. Amen, amen. I'm really happy that you have been able to have that kind of impact on the people around you, Fitzroy, and also being in a position to give back. Um, is there any tip that you can share with our our viewers online this week in terms of like managing their resources and just ensuring that they're using their talents for God? You know, all I have to say, I say to my team, um, even though, and I think I totally believe in what's called servant leadership, right? And if you believe in servant leadership, and yes. servant leadership is all about allowing God to use you in any respect, mm -hmm. asking God that you be a servant for people. And if you allow yourself to be a servant for people, He will use you tremendously. Amen. You will see blessings flowing that you never know Amen. was there. Amen. Um, Amen. You know, things that I've allowed him to come into my life and do years ago. I see years forward, people are like, weren't you the person who did ABC? And I'm like, yeah. And right. they're like, do you know what impact that had on me? That you never know. You never know. And I always say, you know, there's a, there's a, um, there's a song to whine and sing, you may never know. Mm. I know that one. And I always have that song in the back of my mind because we never know when and how and where we'll make an impact on people. Amen. And as long as we allow God to lead us yes. and let Him use whatever we have in our hands, yes. we will be able to make that impact on people. Amen. Fitzroy. It was truly an honor, my brother, talking to you this afternoon. Awesome. I really hope to see you again on our after chat and continue being a blessing, not just to those who report directly into you, but also to those on the island of Jamaica. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We got a chance to speak with our brother, Brother Fitzroy Gillespie, on the impact he has been making in his field. Those who report directly into him and also those who are not even in his line of report. We are reminded every day that we are given gifts, we are given talents, we are given resources that we can use to impact the people around us. So let us ensure that we try to do just that. Use those talents, dedicate them to God and have a great impact on those around us. Now, we have our second guest. Our second guest this afternoon is none other than Sister Nicole. Sister Nicole, how are you this afternoon? I'm good. I'm Sweet. good. I, I, I'm always excited when I have really young people on, the, on, the, um, on our after chat. Yes. For those who may not be <laughs> quite familiar with who you are, Nicole, tell us a little bit about yourself and what activities are you involved in here in Saga <laughs> Church. Um, so, I see here, my name is Nicole Brown. I'm studying human rights and diversity at Laurier. I'm very involved in church, I'm everywhere, but my passion right now is working with our Pathfinder. So, I'm the deputy director for Mississauga Pathfinder Club. I've also been involved in the Acts 29, so our youth ministries and, and lots of other areas in church. Wow, you are busy. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. So, so <laughs> So how do you manage your time? Like, how do you dedicate time to Pathfinder and your personal life and school and church and everything else? It's a lot. And I think time management is one of the biggest things that I'm working on because I'm so prone to burnout because I'm a yes person. Like, of course, I'll say yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. 
Um, but this has been a lesson that I'm definitely learning. Like, as Pastor men mentioned, like other things that are not necessarily mentioned in the Bible are a, a gift, right? And I'm, I'm learning that time management is. Um, I think for me, it's always been a priority to serve. Like, mm -hmm. I've seen my parents from such a young age always be in ministry. Like, at the time, my mom was doing. Um, our adventures and the youth, um, children's ministry. Right. I saw dad in hospitality. I saw dad like through Pathfinders. I mm -hmm. saw him through everything. And so it has set the tone for me to always see myself in ministry, right? Always giving back, um, especially since so many people have poured into me, that serving God was never like a question. Um, I find more now, I'm more inspired to be in my Bible and make God a priority. So whether that means I'm waking up early to just have more time with God, or mm -hmm. if it means I'll call a friend later just so I can have that time. Uh, I just find it is just, it's important. So I know like life gets busy, but it was like at the very end of the day, like, God comes first and serving Him comes first. So, Amen. It's been Amen. a practice, but I'm I'm happy that I can now say that in my life. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Uh, Pastor Cunningham mentioned that people are the most important resource that we're given, right? Yes. Uh, you get to work with a lot of people. Yes. On a daily basis, um, you also have your friends and family. How do you manage like all the different personalities and conflict and all that kind of stuff? Like, is there anything that you can share with us that has worked or that hasn't worked and you've been able to learn from? Um, I think the first thing is mentorship and leadership. Mentorship. Um, mm. That is a very cool thing I get to study right now because I'm studying leadership and looking at the psychology of leadership. So that also has helped me interact with people. Mm -hmm. But growing up, like my dad has always just been so intentional in passing down knowledge. So when he was the director for Pathfinders, every car ride to Pathfinders, he would just be, hey, this is how I work well and this is the things I needed to work on. And so I saw from leaders how to interact with people first. Mm -hmm. And so now that I can step into this role, it, it's not that like, oh, how do I connect and interact with people? But now it's like I've seen it so much, whether it's like church leadership or in my own family, um, how to build communities and, and relationships with people. So I guess now you have to put people first, like whether it's business, whether it's church, in the sense where God has called us to serve, right? And mm -hmm. we see that example from from Jesus, right? Like he met people's needs first before he was just like, here's all about me, right? Yeah, it right. was just like, you're hungry, you know, or whatever your need was, God was there. And so I think that has always been like a place that I've tried to keep in my heart as well. Like for, even with my friends at school, I know who are college kids where it's like, hey, on Wednesdays, we're studying all day. Like I'll make chili, I'll, like I'll bring food. So even in just things like that, like building connections, serving people's needs first, and then you can go deeper with them. Love it, love yeah. it. Uh, Pastor C mentioned that we should all level up. Yes. Right? <laughs> you are in college, so clearly you are leveling up. How do you deal with procrastination? Because you did talk a little bit about, you know, time management before. Why do you think we procrastinate? Or like, how can we get over that? Ah, really good question. And what is interesting is procrastination and is some research is showing that procrastination is not just laziness. Mm. And there is a part of that, but it's also um, how you respond to fear. So sometimes it's the fear of not even getting started. Sometimes it is you feel so overwhelmed that you don't know where to start, so then you don't start. So and how can you <laughs> overcome that fear then? Um, I think you have to remember who you are and who God called you to be. Mm. Uh, I think when we're so caught up, and, and this is a message for myself, because I have that challenge of sometimes even starting when I'm very confident on a project I can, I can be on it when it's something that I'm like okay I don't know what to do then I shy away and I'm not being authoritative and, and stepping up I think you really have to remember the words God has called you right um mm -hmm. what's interesting is I'm reading Ecclesiastics right now and looking at oh we take all these things in vain right like but if we use our gifts, as Pastor was also mentioning, for God's glory, then your little becomes so much more. So Amen. I think Amen. it's learning how to heal from those moments where you feel that you're not good enough, that you can't get started. Um, different plans and planners work for people, like for a tangible strategy. Um, so I find planning out everything and making sure like every Friday, okay, to before, write it out. yeah, to, to write out everything and also prioritize, like prioritize God in your life, prioritize right. that quiet time. And I find like the weeks I'm just like, I'll do my Bible study later and later turns in tomorrow and turns into two days. Right. Like I find the rest of my week, I'm not focused, mm. but the times I really just prioritize God to just say, okay, I'm just going to meditate on your word first. 
And then the rest of the week feels like, oh wait, those things I was a little scared about before, like, no, I have more confidence to do. So definitely reach out for help when you need help. Um, also just be so in tune with God and let God's words inspire you and, and motivate you to, to follow like through. Reach out for help when you need help. Yeah, not many of us do a, it's a hard. really good job at that. It is hard. Because of pride and, you know, and a, a number of different things. But you did share some really good tips with us. Write it out, be intentional, put God first, and get over that fear. Nicole, it was truly an honor talking to you this afternoon. Thank you so much. I need to see you more on the after chat, Nicole. Oh, of course. I'm here. Okay, good. good <laughs> Just good, grab good, me. Good, good, good. All right, no worries. And Happy thanks Sabbath, again. Everyone. Yes, yes, yes. We heard from one of our dynamic young leaders here at Mississauga Church, Nicole Brown. She shared with us tips to get over procrastination, not being able to start, being fearful. And she also shared her challenge as well with time management. And managing our time is one of the resources or one of the things that Pastor C spoke to us over the past two weeks about that we need to get a handle on. And easier said than done, right? We all want to Netflix and chill, not think about anything because it, it, it's just too much mental work. But at some point, it's going to creep up back. So addressing it as soon as possible and prioritizing and putting God in the picture, asking him to help, to help us and also reaching out whenever we need help is paramount. Now, we're wrapping up. Our final guest is the man who delivered the word to us this afternoon. We spoke to him last week. I get to talk to him this week again. Pastor Carl Cunningham. Pastor C, my brother. Oh, man. How you doing? We meet again. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Praise God. It, it, Praise it, God. It, 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 it was really good. You, God. you put together everything, you know, this week from, well, last week you spoke about time, this mm. week you spoke about, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, last week you spoke about money, Yeah, yeah. this week you spoke about time, talent, and people, mm -hmm. TTP, mm. powerful stuff, powerful stuff, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you about the inspiration behind it, I got my answer <laughs> last week, but there are a number of things that you mentioned, mm -hmm. one I want to kind of dive a little bit on, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of put it in like three different points. Mm -hmm. Gifts, well, it's actually two, but mm -hmm. gifts unidentified mm. and gifts unutilized or underutilized. Wow, wow. Ramon, you need to be preaching, brother. Amen, amen. <laughs> gifts, gifts, gifts identified. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> How can we identify the unutilized gifts because mm. that one is hard mm -hmm. like how do i know mm -hmm. that i have a talent for speaking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when i've never even tried it like mm -hmm. how can i tap into those gifts that i haven't really acknowledged mm -hmm. but god has actually given it to me mm -hmm. sometimes i find not i find sometimes generally someone points out our gifts to us mm. someone notices something in you and um sometimes we're reluctant to believe it Right? Oh no, don't me. Ah. You know, but some don't take it for granted when when somebody under the leading of the Holy Spirit says to you know, you have a knack for this. You should try this. You should do it more often. Sounds like it. It it, it sounds like it kind of goes back to that fear thing that Nicole was talking mm. about. Like we being fearful, like nah, nah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that is mm -hmm, not me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I, I I think discovering your gift and walking in that calling takes some vulnerability. Ooh. Right? You've got to be. You've got to be ready to not do it as well as you think you should be do it, mm -hmm. doing it. Um, you've got to be ready to fail, right? And that's very hard. That's hard. But think of Moses. Moses is our primary example of a leader in the Bible, mm -hmm. right? Apart from Jesus. Right. Um, but he would have failed twice. He failed when he was trying to start a rebellion in Egypt, mm -hmm. when he killed the Egyptian, right? And then he failed again. Or he get, went through a learning season when he went into Midian, into the desert. Right. And it, even then, he still didn't think he was ready to be the leader of God's people. Right? But we have to be willing to, to I guess, embrace that vulnerability um, and embrace that calling on our lives. I like the idea of mentorship as well. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to identify those who are where we want to be mm -hmm. and being open and vulnerable enough to say, hey, Pastor Help me. C, I want to be a public speaker. Mm -hmm. 
can you help me mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. can you point me in a direction mm-hmm. or in the direction mm-hmm. you, you know in, in which i can find mm-hmm. the resources mm-hmm. tap into those resources mm-hmm. apply mm-hmm. that which is um outlined in those resources mm-hmm. and then i'll be able to mm-hmm. become mm-hmm. a public speaker the vulnerability again yeah it takes a lot of vulnerability to call somebody and say uh i want to be better at this can you help me first identifying that you need the help yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. For and, sure. and sometimes we're not prepared to to give up the pride of putting ourselves before someone like that naked right you know um but because people need to see us all well put together yeah right? like we, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 um, yeah 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 yeah. On the note of people, uh, you mentioned, and I was talking to our first guest about this, that you know, uh, people are one of the most important resources given to us. Mm-hmm. However, I feel that we fail so many times in that area, mm-hmm. whether it is within our personal relationships, whether mm-hmm. it is with friends, mm-hmm. family, and even those mm-hmm. who we come in contact with every day. Mm-hmm. What are some tips that you could pass on to our viewers to help us better manage the people around us, the different mm-hmm. personalities, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and just the differences? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. another D, mm-hmm. the diversity <laughs> among us, right? Because culture also plays yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a significant yeah, role. Yeah. What yeah. can we do to have better interpersonal relationships? I think of Jesus. I th- we have to understand our limitations, all right? Um, Jesus had 12 close friends. How did he manage all those guys? Like, And one of them still... <laughs> that's the difficulty of dealing with people, right? Mm. Of managing the resource of people. Right. Jesus! And one of them still still didn't make it, right? Um, but look at his, his example. He was patient. Patience. Okay. Patient. I, I think that's a big one um, because... And dealing with different types of personalities. Um, he was trying to show them things that they hadn't seen. And he, some things he, he, he resolved that, you know, you guys don't get it yet, but you will get it one day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, how many times did he tell them he was going to die? What his reason was for coming to earth. What his mission was right. before they actually got it. They didn't get it until he, he was done, gone, and ascended. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think patience is a, is a big one. Um, of course, there are other virtues like respect, um, um, but patience in dealing with, with folk. I think as God, is, God, God is teaching me this as a pastor. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I thought you would have it together, Pastor. Oh, no, Come no, on. no, no. We're just like, <laughs> we're just human. Just a man. I know one thing that has helped me is just to see myself on the same level as everyone else, mm. prone to error. Mm-hmm. The minute I take people off a pedestal mm-hmm. and not like have like these high expectations, mm-hmm. it makes the process so much easier because mm-hmm. the same way how they have hurt me in, maybe in mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. they say is mm-hmm. the same way that I probably mm-hmm. unknowingly have hurt mm-hmm. another person, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So just being able to just see eye to eye. Yeah, I want to say too that we have a tendency to take for granted those people who are always with us. Mm. Sometimes you never know what you have until it's gone. Amen. Until it's left you. Yes. So don't take for granted the people that are entrusted to your care. Don't take for, for granted your family. Your kids, your parents. Your kids, your, your family, family, parents, everyone. brothers, siblings, right? Um, and th- that group is, is, those are the ones which we are most inclined to take for granted. But be intentional not to. This week was our last week, right? Mm -hmm. Um, We spoke about money, time, talent, and people. Mm -hmm. And the stewardship of all those four. Mm -hmm. What can you pass on to our guests as we close now? What can you pass on to our viewers this Mm -hmm. afternoon to Mm -hmm. help them better manage these Mm -hmm. four resources? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Highlight from the sermon. What's in your hand? All these things are in all all our hands Mm -hmm. Um, but we must remember that we are imperfect we're feeble Mm. we're flawed Mm. we'll make a mess (laughs) if you're not prepared for the blessing that god is ready you could win the jackpot oh yes right and you find yourself broke next year (laughs) right easy amen but if you submit no i'm not saying win the jackpot i give it (laughs) if you submit it to god 
um, put your hand in, in God's hand. Amen. He will lead you and he will guide you in managing your resources. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor C, always a pleasure, my brother. Blessings on you, brother. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon to our after chat. We had a chance to connect with two or four guests. We spoke about time, talent, and people. And last week, we spoke about money. We've been given so many resources, so many gifts. And the expectation is for us to dedicate those gifts to God. Put Him first. Put Him at the forefront of everything that we do. And as such, we, and that way, we know we will be good stewards of everything that He has blessed us with. From our team here at the Mississauga State Church, we want to wish you all a amazing and fantabulous week, if that's even a word. Please continue to tune in every Sabbath as we worship our Lord on this His Sabbath day. Have a great week, everyone. I wish you wealth, peace, and prosperity. In Jesus' name, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.